Hi. So, yeah, I'm Arj. I'm a director of product at N26. Uh, most of you who are German-based will know that we are a digital bank. We've existed for about 10 years now. Um, went through a period of hypergrowth. Um, got into some trouble with the regulator, largely due to trying to grow too fast, maybe not paying enough attention to uh, keeping customers' money safe. Um, and we've been investing a lot in this area. So a lot of the topics we have around AI relate to uh, reducing financial crime, but then also being the right side of um, the line of how do we pr create great customer experiences whilst also uh, making sure we keep costs down. If you look at the, the banking landscape for retail banking, um, most retail banks uh, have very high cost bases, largely in operations, and they need to make a lot of revenue off their users in order to be profitable. Uh, we operate on a much lower cost base, um, we have much thinner margins, so we can provide better products to our customers. Um, and we need to continue to do that as we scale. So a lot of the topics we have around operational efficiency relate very closely to this area. And I'll talk to you about some of the use cases. So there's a lot of stuff we're doing with AI. I'll skip this. Um, things around how do we make sure we detect fraud on our platform. So we have identity scores that allow users to, to onboard based on their trustworthiness. They might get smoother onboarding to get access to an account more easily. If they're not trustworthy, we might need to do additional checks, like uh, get their addresses, proof of address, with documents being verified. Uh, we have transaction monitoring uh, models that used to be kind of discrete, um, so lots of rules being created. If you know, multiple transactions have from the, happen from the same account, then that could be suspicious. Um, a huge part of our cost as an organization sits with anti-financial crime operations, so every single time some bad action is detected, someone needs to investigate that. These are very cumbersome tasks. They're fraught with human error. They might be reporting to authorities that needs to happen. There's a lot of manual input. And so there's a lot of work that we can do to help staff um, with better decisioning. And actually, a lot of the use cases we have around Gen AI aren't necessarily customer facing, but they're helping support staff in making better decisions, quicker decisions, automating manual processes, um, and the like. We've got a number of things around sort of labeling of transactions. Uh, the chatbot that we have, it sits on Rasa. Um, it's an in-house built Rasa open source bot. Um, we've had that for about five years now. Handles about three million conversations uh, a year. Um, the deflection's around 35%, so it contains those conversations. Um, and if, if, the, if the bot can't help you, it escalates to a human. Um, chat is our biggest channel by far. Uh, we've got a young customer base, and so the majority of our volume comes through this digital channel. We're less than 10% on voice. So we haven't really been thinking about AI for voice, but as we scale, as we build more complex products, there's a lot more thinking that's going into how do we make sure that uh, if there are more complex queries that we're addressing those in the channels that customers prefer. Um, a number of other things that we're doing, especially around the life cycle of the customer, how do we predict lifetime value? Um, how do we experiment a bit with Gen, I, Gen AI? Um, there's lots of LLM pilots that are happening. Really hard to productionize these things as a bank, but uh, there's been some really interesting insights that came out of that. Um, we talked across the business with many different departments to identify key use cases that we wanted to prioritize for this space, and there were eight clusters identified through this. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into this because there's a lot here. Oh, the slide hasn't translated across well. Um, the next one maybe is a bit easier. So you probably have this in your organizations too. There's a heavy focus around customer service when we talk about chatbots, but actually we saw use cases in, in the growth team, cross product tech and design, legal, operations is a big one that I mentioned, and we've got some support functions as well. Um, we, have, we have a number of use cases that I'll talk to through in a second, and we see these could lead to significant revenue benefits, um, cost saving as well. Um, oh, this has not, this has not come through, <laughs> okay. I'll talk a bit about some of the topics that we have here. Uh, we stack rank them and we, we've looked at cost and benefit. Um, so the first one is conversational summaries. So a lot of our complex use cases, the problem isn't the first contact, it's how we then resolve the contact through multiple touch points and operations. So sometimes let's say you're querying a transaction that you don't recognize, the agent can't help you that much. The bot could probably do a lot of the information collecting, but then it has to be escalated to a back office. And in the back office, maybe uh, someone needs to issue a chargeback. Maybe we could automate that. Maybe some fraud has happened and we need to escalate that. 
And in this case, someone in anti-financial crime operations needs to do some work. Uh, but effectively, each of these members of staff is having to look into the case, see what happened before, um, and if there was a way that we could summarize this easily, um, that would actually save a lot of time. So average handling time reduction is a huge use case for this. And the conversational summary, something very easy to do. If you had previous contacts with us, then we could summarize for an agent exactly what you're doing. N26GBT, which a lot of you will have in your companies, is, is our attempt to build something in-house. Um, so you can search all of the information we have. One of the workshops yesterday mentioned, if your data is crap, then the outputs are gonna be crap. And so we've been spending a lot of effort in trying to clean up our knowledge base, um, the, the tools that we have to help staff provide customers with information, the support center articles that we have online, making sure the links aren't broken, make sure that the, da the, the data is up to date. Um, and that way, we're feeding better data into being able to serve our staff uh, internally better. Our chatbot I've talked about a little bit. Um, from an intent mapping perspective, because we have a traditional NLU model, it's about 88% of the intents are matched from the utterances. And so we have a good understanding of what customers are asking. We're only able to solve those problems maybe 35% of the time right now. We want to get that to 50 by the end of next year. And so trying to make sure that we're increasing the actions that a chatbot can do, understanding when to guide to self-serve, when to potentially um, do something for a customer or take them there. Um, those are all conversations that are happening on a case-by-case -case basis. But um, yeah, the chatbot, at the fallback scenarios, with, we're experimenting with LLMs to be able to get that 88% to 95. Um, Dev Copilot, a lot of your companies will also be thinking about these things. How do you help engineers um, write code more efficiently? Uh, we're hiring flat at the moment, so we're replacing natural churn, but we're planning to get to profitability this year, and so the, the purse strings have been tightened a little bit, and therefore being more productive with the staff we have is, uh, is really important in engineering. And this, uh, this co-pilot will, uh, will definitely lead to more debugging required. I think that was out, came out of one of the workshops yesterday as well. Um, but uh, we expect that um, there'll be, there'll be yeah, a, a lot more efficiencies we can gain. The role of the engineer is likely to change. Um, we've stopped hiring very junior engineers, um, largely because um, yeah, I, think, uh, I think a lot of the more basic tasks could be automated. Um, copywriting, there's a lot of work in content, conversational writing, not just for the chatbot, but we have it for all of our new products, we have it for our support center. Um, moving the copywriting role to be more uh, curating and editing rather than writing is going to be very important for us. We've got very lean teams that write copy and content, and so actually automating a large part of this is something we want to do. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're very frightened about hallucinations, so when it comes to LLMs, very much we're going to be sharing information, um, presenting that to staff who can then make decisions themselves. Um, next we have, next best answer. Yeah, I mean, some of these are pretty self-explanatory, all the things around anti-financial crime operations. Um, the, the biggest cost we have by far is in anti-financial crime operations. The time it takes to make an investi investigation of crime could take 45 or 50 minutes to upload information to a government website could involve copying and pasting 50 or 60 fields. There's a lot that we can do here to automate processes for these staff. And so everything we can do around using AI models to provide more information so staff can make decisions or manually um, reducing the input that, that agents have to have is gonna make a big difference. Um, we've seen really good things with translation so far. So thinking about the fact that we have multilingual customers, um, often uh, to reduce costs, we're looking at other locations outside of Europe to serve our contact centers and our other staff and operations. If they're speaking different languages than the, uh, than the customers, we might need to translate big documents that are PDFs. We might need to um, speak a different language to a customer in real time. So we've got a lot of use cases around translation, both in real time and batch for complex documents. And so we're doing a lot of experiments with that um, in LLMs. Um, yeah, so we actually did a cost-benefit analysis to all of these use cases, and we sort of stack ranked them. Um, these dots are supposed to have different amounts in each of the, uh, in the blocks, but I don't think that's, I think that's my fault, actually, for not sending a PPTX instead of a PDF. But um, yeah, there's a lot of work that we're doing at N26, and um, we're not able to hire, so we're pretty lean in the teams, and so um, it's an exciting future for us. Um, the, the problems 
sit far beyond contact center, but I think um, when, I, when I hear the others talking, there's a lot of ideas I think we're sharing and we're coming up with them independently, so I think we're heading in the right direction. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you very much.